After he had spent everything, a severe famine struck that country, and he had nothing. Then he came to work for one of the citizens of that country who sent him into the fields to feed uh, pigs. He longed to eat his fill from the pots that the pigs were eating, but no one would give him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, How many of my father's hired hands have more than enough food? And here I am dying of hunger. You know, I'll get up. I'll go to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired workers. So he got up and went to his father. But while the son was still a long way off, his father saw him and was filled with compassion. He ran through his arm around his neck and kissed him. The son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father told his servant, Quick, bring out the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his shoes, um, on his feet. Then bring the fattened calf and slaughter it. And let's celebrate with a feast because the son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. Now, his older brother was in the field. As he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he summoned one of the servants, questioned what these things meant. Your brother is here, he told him. And your father has slaughtered the fattened calf because he has come back safe and sound. Then he became angry and didn't want to go in. So his father came out and pleaded with him. But he replied to his father, Look, I have been slaving many years for you, and I have never disobeyed your orders. Yet you never gave me a goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours came, who has devoured your assets with prostitutes, you slaughtered the fattened calves for him. Son, he said to him, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and rejoice, because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. Amen. Amen. So, this older brother comes home and he learns this father is holding a 
big feast, a big party, because of his younger brother who came home. What was the older brother's reaction? To put it mildly, he was very angry. He was so angry. It says, he says, he became angry and didn't want to go in the house. Now, I have some questions for you. Do you think he acted correctly? Why do you think this older act brother acted the way he did? Well, everybody in here has a sibling. You have brothers and sisters, so think about it. If your brother or your sister sold your house, took half the money, took the car, and left, and came back homeless person, how would you react? Would you react like this older brother? From the story, it seems that the older brother became upset because he thought his father was being unfair. Verse 29 says this, look, I have been slaving many years for you and I have never disobeyed your orders, yet you have never gave me a goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. Looking at it from the older brother's perspective, I can understand why he's acting like this. I could see where he's coming from. He's saying, hey, look, I've been working so, so hard. I've been so diligent. I never disobeyed you. I did everything you told me. But look at this brother of yours. Brother, look at this son of yours. This son went out and just squandered the whole estate. Half of everything in this household. And he came back a homeless man. You know, the older brother, I don't think he's so, it's not that he's angry with his younger brother. I think he's angry with his father. He probably felt like a victim. He felt like I'm a victim of unfair treatment. My father is showing favoritism to this guy who doesn't deserve it. I'm the one who deserves this, not him. I'm the one who's been working so hard. Why don't you throw a party for me? So again, what do you think? Is the older brother right in the, in the way he's acting, being angry? protesting well from the older brother's words let's see what the heart of the older brother is let's turn to verse 30 it says this but when this son of yours came first of all his older brother no longer recognizes this guy as his younger brother in Korean, it's not like, it's not like, oppa, dongseng, or hyung, it's like, che, cho saram, dangsine adel. Your son, it's, he's no longer my brother. I'm not going to call him my brother. I'm going to call him your son. This guy, this other son of yours. You can already feel the hatred in, 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 in those words. He was upset. And he disowned his brother. He has made up his mind that this guy was no longer family. You are no longer my sibling. You're actually lower than these hired workers because at least these guys work hard with me. From his attitude towards his younger brother, we can see the older brother's problem. The sin that was overwhelming his heart. The problem was the problem of hate. Instead of loving his brother, he was hateful towards him. Why? Well, because, well, maybe, he was jealous. When his younger brother left, instead of worrying about his younger brother, think about it. If 
let's say Rebecca left, and Jimmy was thinking, what would be in his mind? Would he be worried like, oh, I wonder if she's going to be okay in this sinful world out there? What if she meets some really bad friends? What if she gets hurt? What if she gets used? What if she gets her heart broken? What happens? Instead of roaring, maybe Jimmy was like, oh, I'm so jealous. I wish I could be like her. I'm the one who wants to live this, leave this house. Oh, if I could just leave and just do whatever I wanted to do. When his brother left, instead of worrying about his younger brother because he was walking into an evil world, maybe he probably hated his brother because he was doing something that he wanted to do but couldn't. He wanted to leave, but he couldn't do it. And he hated the guy who did it. Aren't we like that sometimes? You know, we call ourselves Christians, and we don't dare sin those big sins, but we see somebody else, and we're quick to judge, and we're quick to hate. Because, you know, sometimes we feel like, how come they're doing these things? They're Christians, too. So what do we do? Instead of loving that person and praying over that person because of their sin in their life, what we do is we start hating them, judging them, putting our fingers to them. And they're not even Christians. They don't deserve it. Well, the, <coughs> well, that's what this older brother would say. This is no longer my brother. He's not even my brother. Look at, look at how he lived. He let sin turn him into a hateful person. Instead of loving his younger brother, he despised him. Now, what can we see? Well, so that's what we see from the older brother's uh, reaction to the younger brother. Now, let's see what we can tell from how the older brother's attitude was towards his father. Verse 29 says this. Look, I have been slaving many years for you. And I have never disobeyed your orders, yet you never gave me a goat so that I could celebrate with my friends. The older brother compares himself as a slave. He's saying, hey, father, I've been slaving for you. Hey, father, I've been studying really hard for you. It's not for me. You make me do it, so I'm doing it, and I feel like a slave. He says that he's been slaving away for many, many years. He emphasized that he has never disobeyed the father's order. He complains that, that, that father never gave him a goat. Maybe he's saying, you know, God, I'm doing everything in the Bible you're telling me to do. I feel like a slave. But how come you're not listening to my prayer request? How come you're not giving me these things I want so I could party in my life? That I could have a feast in my life? I feel like a total slave for you. Just as how he had not considered his brother to be his real family, now he's not considering his father to be real family either. Father is someone who he has to obey. Father is someone who he has to serve and slave for. Father is someone who does not care about him, who does not give him a goat to celebrate, who does not show appreciation for him slaving away. Now, when the older brother is like that, how does the father react? First of all, he says this, Father came out and pleads with his son, right? Father said, hey, where's my older brother? I mean, where's my older son? He's outside. He comes out and he pleads with him. He begs him to come in. Well, if he was a master, would he do that? No. If this was really a slavery, slave-master relationship, there'd be no such consideration. Tell him to come in here right now. Tell him to wait on that table. Because if that's the slave, 
that's how it be. But Father does not do that. He confirms the parental relationship by coming out to the son. And he pleads with him. He begs him. Even though father did nothing wrong, he still begs the older brother. He still begs the older son to come home and welcome the younger son. Father responds by saying this, son, you are always with me and everything I have is yours. But we have to celebrate and rejoice because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. First of all, the father starts the conversation by saying what? Son, not hey you, my slave, my son. He wants to remind the older son of the unbreakable parental relationship that they have. He's saying, I am your father. And you are my precious, loving son. And then he says, what? Everything I have is yours. Forget the calf. Everything I have is yours. Forget the goat. We're not talking about that. Forget that little thing that you want. Everything is yours. You are my son. After reminding the older son of the parental relationship, he confirms the family relationship between him and his younger brother. He says, hey, this brother of yours, he is not only my son, he is your brother. Now your brother, the one you love, was dead, was homeless, was heartbroken, was lonely, was hurt. But now he's home again. He's in our warmth. He's in our care. He's in our loving relationship again. He was lost and he's found. He was dead, but now he's alive. The father is asking the older brother to look at his younger brother as family again, not a stranger. The father explains himself even though he doesn't have to. The father shares his heart, his joy, that the younger son who was dead is now alive. Now, as we close, I want to ask you, have you ever hated your brothers or sister? Don't answer that here. (laughs) Have you ever For those teachers, have you ever hated your husband or wife? (laughs) Maybe because of envy and jealousy, maybe some of the siblings had bad feelings toward their sibling, whether they're younger brother, older sister, younger sister, older brother. Maybe they were jealous because Maybe they have better personalities. Maybe they have more friends. Maybe they're smarter. Maybe they're more talented. Maybe they feel like the parents like the other person more. Maybe because of it's your greed and pride. You don't want to be less treated than the other person. You want to be better than your sibling. You want more and better things than your sibling. Have you ever hated your parents? Hate is a very harsh word. Have you ever became angry at your parents? Because you think maybe sometimes they're unfair. Maybe you think that their discipline is unwarranted. Maybe you feel like they're hypocrites. Maybe because they're not giving you or doing things that you want. Whatever it is, I want to tell you that the base, the base of your hate and your dislike is from your self-centeredness. Okay? It is because you consider yourself, your welfare, your desires, your wants before those of your brothers or sister, be- before your parents, and even before God. It is because you love yourself more than you love your brothers or sisters, your parents, or God. 
This is the unrepentant sin of the older brother and the unrepentant sin of many Christians today. Many Christians today, you know, they are not blatantly rebel against God as this younger brother, but many have the same unrevealed resentment towards, towards our Heavenly Father. We may consider ourselves to be working hard for our Heavenly Father. We say, hey, we go to church. We do our QT. We attend small group meeting. We try to do good. But some may consider these as slaving away for God. Doing my obligation for God. That he's actually a slave driver. Instead of loving your brothers and sisters, you may be save, saying to your Heavenly Father, hey, look at that son of yours. Look at that daughter of yours. Look how they're acting. They're not even Christians. They shouldn't even come, be coming to this church. You may be filled with jealousy or envy. You might think that God's showing favoritism. Hey, they don't deserve it. How come they get everything they want? Sometimes you think that you're being treated unfair. How come me? Always me, God. You never get a goat for me. Yet you get a fattened calf for that guy. Let me tell you that this attitude is clearly sinful. That the sin is due to your self-centeredness. And that this must be repented. Let me end with this. Are you guilty of having the unrepentant heart of the older brother? Do you sometimes feel like you are slaving away for God? Do you feel like a slave who is obligated to obey the command of a master instead of listening to your loving father? What God tells you, my son, my daughter, I love you. I died for you, and everything I have is yours. The heavens, love, joy, peace, hope, everything I have is yours. Do you find yourself unhappy? Do you feel wronged? Do you feel like somebody's treating you? Not fairly. Your parents. God. When I was young, and still now, I feel the same way too. Especially when our parents tell us something. Sometimes they get angry. They overreact or something. We think they're overreacting sometimes. And it hurts us. Why are they angry like that? Why are they raising their voice to me like and I feel like I'm treated unfair. I'm, I'm angry. I feel like, do they even care about me? Well, let me tell you. If you're going to stay that way, you're just going to be feeling unhappy all the time. Because sin has you in its grip. What you have to do is you have to wake up. You have to come to your senses and say, hey, my Heavenly Father loves me. My parents loves me. My brother, my sister loves me. I'm feeling this way because I'm being selfish. I'm being self-centered because I count myself, my feelings first. I'm a Christian. I'm somebody who loves God more than myself. I'm somebody who loves my brothers and sisters, my parents, those around me more than I love myself. Once you realize this again and you lay yourself down, you could be happy. You could be filled with joy, with peace, because you are repenting. Next time, probably even today, when you feel upset because things are not going your way, stop. Hey, why am I feeling this way? 
Why am I feeling unhappy? Why am I feeling unsatisfied? Why am I feeling like I'm treated badly? Oh, I have to repent. Because God loves me. My parents love me. Repent and what? Know that your Father in heaven and on earth, your parents love you very much and never, ever doubt their love for you. Turn to your brothers and sisters and try to love them today more than yesterday because they are your loving siblings. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you, Lord. Help us not to be good and unrepentful. Help us not to obey you and be resentful. Help us not to do things as if we are obligated and we feel angry about doing it. Help us not to point our fingers to our siblings, our brothers and sisters, and look at those guys. Look how bad they are. They shouldn't be acting that way. But when the brothers and sisters does wrong but comes back to God and says, I'm sorry, we should be grateful and say, it's okay. You were lost, but now you're found. You were dead in your trespasses and your sin, but now you are alive again in God's love. Help us to be a loving son, a loving daughter, a loving brother, a loving sister, Lord. Help us not to be unhappy, not to be angry, not to be despising other people this week, but to realize that these things are the sins of unrepentfulness and help us to repent and come back to you and love those around us, Lord. Fill us with your Holy Spirit and give us the strength the wisdom, patience, and love, Lord. I also pray that you just keep us safe, keep us healthy from the coronavirus and everything else, Lord, in this world. Provide for us our daily bread. I pray that as you want to forgive us our sins, we would ask to be forgiven each and every day. Keep us and fill us with the Holy Spirit. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray, amen. Amen. Okay, I have a couple of announcements. First of all, I sent an email. The Youth Wave Winter Conference is December 28th through 30th. Uh, December 1st is the registration deadline for, for our church. Please send me an email saying, yes, I will attend. I talked to my parents, and they agree that I could... Uh, do the uh, online winter camp conference and send me a confirmation by December 1st that you want to join, okay? Uh, number two, this coming Saturday, we are having our youth hangout at 5 o'clock. I'm going to send out another invite this week. I pray that all of us could join us. Uh, thank you, Jimmy, for the uh, FNL that... that you guys been having uh, while well, on your guys' own on Saturdays. And uh, I pray that as we talked about today, that you would spend this week being not unhappy, okay? Being not unhappy. Okay, thank you. Let's go into our small groups now. <laughs>